Okay, can you can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So maybe maybe uh, uh, we ask of, for for the few words of introduction from 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 you, and then we will take over. Uh, dear colleagues, welcome to our first lesson uh, for the project Women Future Entrepreneurs Program, supported by Visegrad Arm. Today we start uh, the classes for understanding the business environment in Poland. Uh, you are welcome, and I, I'll give the floor to our colleagues from Poland. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Staszek Ivan, and uh, to, with me is Kasia. Kasia Pilk. Hello. We're both, we are both from uh, Linking Foundation. Linking Foundation is a Polish partner of this uh, project, funded by, by Wyszekland Fund, uh, and uh, taking place in, uh, in uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary, uh, Slovakia. And uh, we will, we will uh, organize uh, the lectures uh, for you regarding the business, running business, starting business, doing business uh, in Poland. So uh, a few words about the Lingi Foundation. It was founded almost 10 years ago. And uh, our main goal is to, to support development of local communities uh, with the help of of modern technologies and uh, we do some projects, international projects mostly regarding the education, uh, integration, cultural projects, uh, mostly uh, targeted to uh, uh, women entrepreneurs or women uh, w uh, wanting to be or starting a business. Uh, also some projects about uh, migrant integration. So uh, we have a broad web of partners around the Europe for our projects. We were also doing some projects for the uh, Ukrainian refugees. We just finished the, 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 the training projects for, for uh, 60 people regarding Polish language and uh, some basic skills uh, needed for uh, staying in Poland and living in Poland. Mm. And we are happy to be a part of this project and share with you some knowledge that we hope will be interesting and useful for, for, for all of you. Um, so, this is a question to you guys. Uh, have you had already a chance to get to know each other a little bit better as a group um, or not? Um, and if yes, then we'll skip this exercise. But if not, then um, I have some fun exercise for you. So, let me know. <laughs> it's so, so. So, so, yeah, okay, so let's do it then. Um, you have a QR code um, on this slide, so you can open it um, with, your, with, the, your, with your phone or uh, you can use the link below um, the QR code. And uh, basically the exercise is um, kind of like we'll be taking turns spinning the, spinning the wheel. And that you will have um, access to using the QR code. And um, when you spin the wheel, uh, you just have to answer the question that you get. And um, it's supposed to be like, you know, quick and fun and just to break some ice and uh, get to know each other a little bit better. So there's some like more serious questions and there's some funny ones. So um, let's do it. <laughs> so if you could open the, um, um, the QR code and let me know if you 
finished and then we can we can start and take turns. So I did it and I'm just waiting for for I just I just got the question what do you want to achieve in the next uh, few months? Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> well it, well it's easy. Uh, uh, we are working on some projects in, in LinkedIn Foundation. So, so uh, what we want to do is uh, prepare the, the best reports uh, when we finish them. And also, uh, I hope to have a nice vacation. <laughs> Where are you going for vacation? This, oh, unfortunately, I go to Malta for, for a month. So, yeah. Um, um, okay, I'm going to go next, next to make it easier. And <laughs> so I got a fun question, uh, which is, what is your spirit animal? And I think for me, I would say maybe a dolphin, because I love water and um, just calm. And I think dolphins are like funny and bubbly. I mean, I've never actually... Uh, had a chance to interact i saw some delphins like two times i think but never had a chance to like interact but i think delphins are cool <laughs> and fun fact um they sleep with um they they kind of like always awake because when they sleep they like their brain take turns in staying awake so one one part is sleeping the other is awake and then they switch so um that's just a fun fact. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Who go? Who wants to go next? Maybe we'll just. Um, okay, it's continue. Okay. What is your biggest achievement so far? No, <laughs> I even don't know what to choose. Uh, maybe that I eventually, uh, I don't know, studying uh, Polish, and now I can. I allow to provide my trainings not only in English but also in Polish, and I think it's like it's my latest achievement. Amazing! Congrats! Thanks. <laughs> That's big. <laughs> okay, nice. who wants to go next? If anybody of you have a problem with with spinning the wheel, we can spin the wheel for you. So, <laughs> maybe Olena? Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Olena and I have the same question here. What is my biggest achievement? And uh, it's difficult for me to choose uh, only one uh, because I have been working as creative entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur for almost 10 years. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator. And uh, also I, uh, I used to have a little um, brand uh, in Ukraine with t-shirts, with uh, prints. And maybe my biggest achievement was my solo exhibition of my graphic uh, prints in Kyiv. That's amazing. If you have any like link to your website or to the exhibition, um, send it in the chat. I'm sure people would love to uh, see. Yeah, you more. thank you. <laughs> okay, who who wants to go next? I can be the next one. Um, so my question is: As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, so basically, as a child, I wanted to be a flight attendant because um, when I was flying um, around and while I was traveling, uh, these uh, ladies, they were so elegant, nice looking, etc. And um, I loved traveling. I loved uh, visiting new cities, new places, countries. Uh, so I wanted to be a flight attendant. But I grew up and now um, my... Uh, major and my work is not connected to it but maybe who knows in the future <laughs> uh, something <laughs> will change <laughs> thank you who's next 
I can be next. Uh, my question is, uh, what is your passion? Uh, and my passion uh, is health, wellness, body, and physical uh, training. Uh, I like uh, I like active life, and uh, I love what uh, everything around this uh, uh, around this topic. Yeah, this is my passion. Okay. Great, <laughs> amazing. Okay, and oh. and uh, I Ma Marina. My name uh, my name is Marina. Um, my question is, uh, what is the best piece of advice you uh, have ever been given? And uh, I think about it uh, phrase, uh, believe in yourself and uh, embrace your unicorn strengths and abilities. Good. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Oh, maybe I have so a question. If you could choose uh, any two famous people to have dinner with, who would they be? I think maybe Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, because I think it's very interesting people. They had in, in their ideas and they could uh, implement the, uh, their ideas. And uh, I wonder, I wonder how they did it and where did they get the energy to move forward. Love that. As, that's a very like, um, that would be an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Irena asked for, uh, for something on the chat. Uh, yeah, uh, could you repeat the question for audience? Do you do you mean the question that Olga had or um, the exercise that we're doing? Uh, or maybe you want to... For a yeah. joint later, could you please uh, give short, very short guidance uh, about the exercise? Okay. Yes. Oh, go you on, can go. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, so basically the exercise is that um, you can use the QR code uh, on the screen. I don't know if you still can see, I, I think yeah, so. Yeah. Um, and then um, it, it takes you to like a wheel that you can spin and then you get a question um, to answer. So everyone just takes a turn and um, answers uh, one question. And it's just to like, you know, break the ice and get to know each other a little bit better. There is no link already. Sorry, sorry, uh, I, I was late. I joined later. No, no uh, problem. I, I will, I will spin for you and, and, uh, and okay. ask the questions. The okay. question: What are you looking forward to? Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking about urban love in Ukraine. Uh, working with green solutions and um, maybe green roofs. I, I I want to make it as a social entrepreneurship. I like flowers. This is the reason why I selected this. <laughs> um, this dream. Mm, that's it. I have experience as manager, but I don't have experience as a businesswoman. Um, if you um, want, um, we we kind of like finishing uh, already the training, but we're running for another project, a training about social entrepreneurship. Um, it's called Social Innovation Brokers. So um, if you want, I can send you some more info about yeah, that. I will be very interested. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, who wants to go next? I think we have to, we, only Victoria is, is left, right? Victoria Hamretska. Yes, it's, hello everybody. Uh, can you please spin? Uh, mm, I will, I will, okay, I will spin for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the question from Fon. <laughs> Go. 
going slowly. Oh, it's just the same. Oh, what is your what is your what is what's your uh, spirit animal? <laughs> I believe my spirit animal is a uh, capybara. This little uh, um, <laughs> of a pig or something. <laughs> I often uh, show pictures that uh, uh, this animal can adapt uh, to different circumstances uh, to. I have different uh, connections, and uh, sometimes I'm really um, oh, impressed uh, uh, what in what environment I could be uh, one day, and in what environment I could be another way, uh, another day. Yeah, so consider copy part. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so uh, everybody said something about yourself, right? Okay, yeah. then we can move on Except to the next our... exercise, which is kind yeah. of similar, but a bit more, more formal. So basically, we would like you to each just like say a little bit about yourself. So just so we can get to know you uh, a little bit better about your background, um, about your relevant uh, business experiences, if you have any, and if you don't, don't worry. And um, your future business aspirations, kind of like what you're interested in. Um, and then also a really important aspect that we want you to address is your expectations for this model and this training. Um, so basically, what do you expect from to learn uh, in this model? And um, so we can address your needs a little bit better. Basically speaking, you know, we, we want to know each other and we want to craft the, the, the sessions uh, for your needs. So, so we, we want to talk about things that you're really interested in and that would uh, help you in your uh, business endeavors on, the, on in life or whatever it's, it's, it's needed by you. So, uh, uh, also, just to get like a hang of your uh, kind of like knowledge and, and level of uh, of what you uh, want to learn, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's start because somebody needs to do this. Yeah. Uh, so my Good. name is Lubov, and uh, actually, I from uh, my passion is sustainable development, and I work as a scientist and uh, as a teacher and lecturer. And uh, this is a field of my expertise. So that's actually all my activities during last years connected with sustainable development development in one way or another and uh, I have my own business I work actually as a solo entrepreneur in Ukraine uh, and uh, actually it was uh, I cooperate like with the uh, EBRD in uh, environmental assess uh, oh my god strategic so yeah, environmental assessment I forgot all the names so and then I, now I closed my business because uh, when the war have studied and uh, I looking for some inspiration for new contacts and maybe for some uh, tips how to do business in Poland actually because now I moved uh, and, to Poland. Uh, and where, what what town you live? Where do you live? Uh, in Bielsko <laughs> it's like Okay. Far away. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Not far away. We're 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 based in Krakow. So uh, oh no, yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah. two hours. <laughs> not 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 that far. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Who's next? I think I could be next. Um, my name is Irina Kravchuk. I was born in small city Lux, but then I moved to Kiev. So last twenty years mm. I've been living in Kiev. And after the start of the war, I moved to Warsaw. And uh, my, okay, I need to tell a bit of story. Like uh, the first 10 years I was working in the public administration, in the Ministry of Justice, and in the area of um, European integration. Then I moved to the area of evaluation and uh, evaluation and monitoring of program and projects. And in this, I'm, I'm work, I have been working in this area for 12 years already. 
I heard in Lotton was as uh, independent consultant. Uh, then I moved to the uh, UCD project and I was managing a small analytical unit for four people. I have been managing teams from five to 25 people. And uh, yes, I established also a company in uh, Poland, but it's like Jelalna uh, Shedno mm Subova. -hmm. In fact, I work alone, but yes, I'm thinking about <laughs> on the one side, I have this dream of establishing Urban Lab in Ukraine, uh, working with green solutions. And the other side, I would like to develop as myself as an entrepreneur in the area of monitoring and evaluation. Um, Okay, so I think it would be and, you, and your and and your business in Poland, what 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 is what it's about? Uh, this is consulting of the program and projects on monitoring and evaluation of uh, programs. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Or development of theory of change, development of uh, log frame. Right now, I'm part time consultant in uh, safeguarding project for Eastern Europe. Hmm. Uh, but I, I know that I can manage people, but I don't know how to manage business. <laughs> so it will be thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And to add, uh, yeah, but you, you didn't tell anything about your, your expectation from the training. So uh, uh, my expectation from the training would be um, how to maybe from the one person company to make a five six ten person company it's short term goal and long term goal is how to develop this uh, now i am doing research on urban labs and my like long term goal is to establish this urban lab in uh, ukraine a social uh, enterprise okay thank you Who's next? And you're based in War in Warsaw, right, Irina? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm based in Warsaw. Maybe I can continue. Okay. Uh, I will try to turn my camera on. I do not. I'm not sure if you can see me. Yeah, we yeah. can see you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Victoria Hamretska. I was born in Chernigiv and then moved to Kiev and currently I'm located in Zelona Gura in Poland. It's near the border with Germany. Um, I finished international economic relationship and work for uh, the company of uh, production of military equipment, armored vehicles and uh, mortar launchers. <laughs> uh, was working in sales and marketing and then I moved uh, to Poland before the war and now work for the company who do uh, raw materials trading, it's uh, carbon products. Uh, it is connected with sales. And uh, currently I'm considering about uh, becoming um, like independent unit doing this business uh, because I have uh, like the connections with uh, some uh, customers. It's maybe one uh, scope of field I would like to continue. But uh, in general, I'm here to um, search for the new opportunities, maybe to new openings to myself. Um, also, I'm here to, in the search of uh, how to position myself for, in the business and also to learn more about the business environment and uh, um, like, um, which is um, what, uh, how, how to say it in English, that, uh, um, uh, what is business environment in Polish and uh, maybe what are uh, governmental uh, regulations and uh, such things and uh, uh, maybe some uh, uh, points um, how, um, how how to sell uh, the product I would like uh, to sell to the people. Thank you. Thank you. Who want to be next? Mm, okay, my Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, my name is Olana, and I have been working as creative entrepreneur uh, for almost 10 years. Uh, I work as a graphic designer and illustrator focused on um, identity, on packaging design, on book cover designs. 
and uh, also illustrations. And um, uh, sometimes I find myself uh, very overwhelmed because I work as a one woman studio and I do everything myself. So I uh, started asking myself if I can grow as a business, if I can grow from uh, individual entrepreneur to a small studio and if I can uh, delegate things and uh, increase uh, my um, increase my income that way. So I'm currently based in Krakow. Okay. And yes, and my future business aspirations to grow my business uh, a little bit and to increase my income. And um, uh, my expectation from this training is to get known how to run business in Poland because I'm still uh, registered in Ukraine. I pay taxes in Ukraine. Um, so I would like uh, to know how to do it in Poland in some formal uh, aspects and also how to find uh, clients in Poland. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Who's next? Anastasia, maybe? Yes, maybe I will, uh, I will be the next one. <clears throat> uh, my name is Anastasia. I'm from Lviv. Uh, and uh, from March, uh, I, have, uh, I have been living in Krakow uh, with my son, with my little son. And um, now I'm working like, um, uh, like a digital marketer. Uh, I'm working uh, during uh, four years, uh, like a freelance, yes, and uh, I work, uh, I work, I have worked with uh, uh, a lot of business, a lot of niches, uh, uh, and uh, now I want to build uh, my own, um, like a boutique marketing agency, uh, and uh, what I expect oh, I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll. on this course or out um, how I can uh, uh, no uh, who is uh, an entrepreneur here in Poland and what uh, what question they have what problem they have uh, maybe 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 you can uh, give me uh, give me answer to this uh, to this information uh, to this question. And uh, yes, of course, I want to know about uh, how I can to uh, to make uh, business here in Poland and uh, of course in Krakow. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who do we have left? I will point, uh, maybe Irena? Marina, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, my English not very good. Uh, no problem, don't trying. worry about that. We will understand uh, each other. I'm from Kyiv, but now, now I located uh, in uh, Retro. It's not far from uh, Krakow. Um, uh, I am a uh, food technologist technologist by profession uh, but I'm currently on uh, maternity leave uh, and uh, I used to work in international company uh, before maternity leave in uh, research and development uh, department like Danone and Carlsberg Kar Ukraine. I create new recipes uh, for food uh, things and now I uh, think about my personal business, uh, my own business. Uh, it will be a cafe uh, with a small bakery with the unicorn recipe. Uh, I think about uh, range, uh, about a range of beverages uh, and um, cakes. Uh, uh, but um, no, I think it will be uh, seasonal special uh, specialties. Uh, signature recipe and um, a specific dietary preference uh, or restrictions. So for example, 
coffee without caffeine or lactose-free. And um, in this um, cafe, I um, want to see a little uh, playground for, for, for children. Uh, so, uh, um, and um, uh, I want to say that uh, I know about uh, uh, many uh, things about technology, but uh, I uh, uh, don't know uh, since um, business since uh, and uh, I um, just I want to to have skills to, to run and to organize my business uh, in in Poland. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Who is left? Uh, Ol Olga? Olga? Uh, yes. My name is Olga. I am from uh, Dnipro. Now I locate with my two children uh, in Brutso. Uh, I have worked as a marketing manager in B2B company. Um, I made uh, guideline presentation, organized participation exhibition, conference, and different things uh, in their company. And uh, now I want to develop this activity in my own and uh, my expectation about these teachers. Um, I want to know um, which tools, uh, maybe activities uh, should to do in own business. Mm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Who's left? Daria? Uh, hello, my name is Daria. Um, I'm from Kiev, but currently I'm located in Wroclaw. Um, so I, uh, I'm a philologist and translator. I before the war I worked as uh, in a legal firm as a translator, uh, but here in Wroclaw I'm working as an HR specialist, and. Um, after coming to Poland, uh, I saw that many women came here also with their children. And I thought that maybe uh, it will be good uh, to open uh, my own business, um, some English classes. Um, and um, so that my business would be profitable, not only for uh, Ukrainian children, but also for Polish ones. So uh, I expect that this course will help me um, organize uh, my ideas uh, and implement it in my business. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, anyone left or not? Uh, I guess we've covered all, all of the participants for today, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for all for the information about you, about what you're doing and and uh, what are your expectations. I think it will be a good idea if we create some kind of survey and send to you uh, regarding the uh, the things that you do the things you plan to do and the things you would like to learn about. So we'll have, we'll have it all in the same form from each of the participants. I think Kasia, we will, we will prepare things like that because uh, what we're gonna talk about it's, uh, we start with some basic information about the, the business environment in Poland. Uh, how to set up the company, what are the tax implications, and so on and so on. 
uh, but then we would like to uh, cover the topics that would really uh, help you in your uh, in your uh, life and with with your businesses maybe we will uh, invite some other lecturers if we will find find that that there are specific topics that uh, big part of you it would be interested in so so that would be the plan and if we get the information from you we already got some information but uh, if we have it in a, like more uh, uh, in a written form, it will be it will be easier for ev everyone, and you also be able to maybe uh, elaborate more about about um, your needs and uh, what we can do about you, about it. Uh, yeah, so I think we we have a we have a uh, 50, 45, 50 minutes. So we'll start to talk about the general uh, picture of the business environment in in Poland. Uh, yeah. 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 So, so uh, uh, well, uh, when you when you uh, I don't know how much did you know about about Poland and when you came to Poland, but but we will. Uh, we will uh, just cover quickly some 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 topics and uh, explore the the unique aspect of of the Polish business uh, landscape and to talk about the, the economy, how it's uh, what's the ease of of doing a business in Poland, what are the different business structures, and uh, why it's it's good to 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 do business in Poland and what are the difficulties so uh, basically well as you know Poland is strategically located in like the in the in the heart of of Europe uh, it's a it's a quite big market size because it's 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 almost 40 million people which is which is good and bad at the same time because uh, most of the Polish companies that start they just address the the local Polish market. R rarely think about the global scale, which should be uh, which should be uh, good for 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 thinking about about the business, especially uh, when it touches the digital digital businesses. Uh, What's important? Uh, what's important? It's uh, uh, Kasia. Could you move the slide back <laughs> because we're we're already in the another one <laughs> with the with the second one? Uh, wait, which one? Uh, one. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, mm, 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 no, not really. You uh, back after the introduction. This is yeah. The... Okay. Okay. That, that, no, no, no. Which one? This one? Sorry, sorry. The, the next one. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> fine. Yeah. Uh, so what's what's important about, about Poland is the market size. It's a fairly skilled labor force, meaning that the uh, that people are quite good educated. Mm, uh, most of the young people speak English. Uh, and what's important, it's uh, the dynamic growth of Poland as you see on the on the on the slide that actually since 1992 we're going up and up so that's important thing of course the 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 fact that the Poland is a part of European Union gives us additional advantages and uh, it's uh, it's 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 easy access to to the uh, whole European Union uh, market. So when you when you set up a company in Poland, you're just working in the whole European Union, and you could give your services and and offer your services or or products to the to the whole uh, European uh, Union. And what we're gonna do? It's just we just go through the 
comprehensive understanding of Polish economic indicators, labor, infrastructure, and we'll talk about the legal and uh, regulatory uh, environment and the practical aspect of doing business in Poland. And we also talk about the, uh, the challenges uh, which are really important in the, the overall challenges and the challenges coming from the recent, uh, uh, recent events like the war in Ukraine and the, and the energy crisis. So uh, those, are, those are the things that, that influence all businesses, new or, 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 or old businesses that are in Poland. And uh, so starting with the, with, the, with the economic overview, Poland, Poland is the sixth strongest economic, uh, uh, largest uh, economy in European Union. Uh, growing since 1992. Uh, during this time, it's 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 important that during the the peak crisis in 2009, Poland was like one of the two countries in Europe that did not go into recession. So uh, that was the time of 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 uh, of uh, constant uh, uh, growth. Mm. Of course, right now we have some problems with inflation, as you know, uh, which is uh, which is higher than in in uh, eurozone. But we will cover that also uh, later on. Uh, Poland is also a, a good place for for foreign foreign investment uh, because of the market size and and uh, skilled labor and. Uh, Local, location, so uh, it's it's one of the leading countries in Central and, and Eastern Europe uh, regarding the foreign foreign direct investment. Uh, yeah, how easy it it is to to uh, start and run a business in Poland. Uh, actually, it's it's getting better uh, every uh, every year and uh, the legislation is uh, working towards making the starting the business or, or running the business easier most of the most of the time so uh, in the world bank uh, ease of doing business poland is uh, 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 impressively high in this ranking uh, and this index is important because it measures not just uh, uh, regulations regarding the setting up the business, but also the running the business in 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 uh, key uh, areas. So the index evaluates uh, the ease of starting a business, dealing with const uh, construction permits, getting some commodities like electricity. Registering property, getting credit, uh, protecting minority investors, taxes, and so on, and so on. So, in the recent years, uh, Poland has made several um, key changes to enhance its business environment. Uh, when I started my first company in uh, the 1990. Eight. Mm -hmm. It took me like a month to go through different to, dif to different uh, institutions to get some uh, numbers, to get some uh, statistical number, tax number, uh, register everything, wait for for the for the for the uh, some agencies to come back with with answers and so on. For years, there was talk about how to set up the one window, one window solution for starting the business. Uh, in some cases, it is like that. In some cases, it's still um, more complicated regarding the regarding the the, the way of, of 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 running the business. But overall, it's the process of of starting the business. It's it's really streamlined and and the the. Procedures are 
simple and uh, easy uh, to use. So, <clears throat> Uh, so it <clears throat> sorry. So uh, uh, when you want to <clears throat> when you want to set up a company in Poland, it's uh, it's uh, not very difficult. So uh, you important thing is when starting a business to understand a type of business structures and uh, which are crucial for for for. Uh, future or existing entrepreneurs so we 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 take a we will take a look about <clears throat> uh, various types of of businesses that uh, that could be uh, set up uh, in Poland uh, we'll talk about them like in general terms in the next uh, lectures uh, we will dive deeper into some of them that are most uh, interesting for uh, for for individuals. Uh, generally, in Poland, you can operate the business under various structures. So, the choice depends on uh, the nature of the business, the number of owners, and uh, the level of responsibility for business obligations. And I will describe uh, shortly the the most common common form the most popular is the uh, it's is the sole pro, uh, uh, proprietorship działalność uh, gospodarcza that's a, that's the simplest form of doing business where individual owner have all the responsibility for the business obligations so it's easy to establish uh, there are no many formal obligations, but when you set up this individual działalność gospodarcza, you are responsible with all with all your personal assets for the for the business. It's like you're doing the business in your own name. So uh, when you're running a business as this uh, sole proprietor, so uh, individual działalność, uh, if anything happens with your business, you have some debts, uh, you have to pay from your own uh, from your own possession. So you're responsible, personally responsible for everything that happens with the business. Uh, another form of, and that's 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 the most most popular way of doing a business in Poland, because. Uh, uh, of course, you, you're responsible with with all with all your assets about uh, the the business. But on the other hand, you make your decision um, uh, by your own, and uh, and and uh, that's the way you you can you can run the business. If you if you want to do the business with some partners, there are several types of partnerships in Poland that you could use for. For, for doing the business. What's important and how you, you could use it? Let's say you started the business as an as a, as a individual person, but then you want to partner with someone that brings some expertise, knowledge, or capital, or money for, to, to your, to your, to your uh, uh, an, uh, business endeavor. So then you set up the, the partnerships and there are a uh, few, uh, few uh, types of partnerships. There's a civil partnership, a registered partnership, a professional partnership, a limited partnership and limited joint stock partnership. So a different kind of, of partnerships usually chosen by small to, to medium businesses. Uh, all professionals such as uh, lawyers or, or doctors. We will we will talk about each of them in the in the future lectures. Then there are some uh, there are some uh, limited there is a limited liability company. That's something that's also very popular in Poland. Uh, what's the different What's the difference? It's the it's called in Poland spukas ograniczone odpowiedzialnością. Uh, and, th and that's the, the most popular uh, uh, 
among the the entrepreneurs because what's the advantage of this kind of uh, of of company? Uh, basically, shareholders are not responsible for the company obligation. So let's say the company uh, takes some loan from the bank or from someone else, and in the in the when when it has uh, some problems or it, it cannot uh, pay it back, uh, the owner the the shareholders. Uh, are not responsible with their own assets. It's just uh, assets of the company that could be, uh, could be, let's say, seized or seized by by the by the uh, bank or or things like that. So uh, it just separates the private responsibility from the business business responsibility. Uh, establishing this kind of company, this limited liability company. Or in Polish, spółka z ograniczoną odpowiedzialnością, uh, is a bit more complex than just a personal business, and it, it requires some minimum share capital. Uh, actually, the the capital required is not that big as the, as it as it used to be. Uh, let's say, 15 years ago, it was like. Then it was like 50,000 uh, uh, Polish zloty to set up the, the, the company. Now it's, I, I, as I remember, 5,000, so not that much. We will cover that also in some of the, of the future, future lectures. What's important and, 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 and good to know is that, that uh, the benefit of, of this, as called limited liability, ograniczona odpowiedzialność, uh, and it's good for business of any size. So, uh, in this kind of company, uh, the the one responsible for for the for the uh, all the things connected to the company is the like the management of the company. Then there are some others, some other uh, forms of of doing business. Uh, like the joint stock company, which is the Glaspook Axena. Uh, this this is chosen mostly by the by the large scale businesses that want to enter the stock market, or uh, uh, they want to uh, go public, or uh, get some financing from the from the uh, from the uh, some venture capitals or all things like that. Uh, and it also allows. Uh, public trading of shares. Uh, I wish all of you that your company will grow to this kind of, or to this size of company that you would have to, uh, to to set up the joint stock company and and go, you know, IPO or or, or go on the market. So, so those are the main the main types of businesses that we could have in Poland. And uh, uh, we'll we'll talk uh, more about, especially the the sole proprietorship company and the partnership companies and the limited liability company, because it's uh, it's uh, it could be useful for 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 all of you. Uh, another another important aspect of of doing business in Poland is the regulatory environment. Uh, so let's delve into it now a bit. Uh, so is the legal landscape. Uh, of course, Poland, Poland operates under the uh, civil law system. The constitution is, is a, the sup country's supreme law. And uh, uh, in principle, it ensures uh, like the democratic state uh, with the division of powers between legislative, executive, and judicial powers. Uh, we have some problem with that lately, but the principle stays as 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 it is. So, like the key regulatory bod bodies in Poland is the Polish Parliament, Sejm, and Senate that creates the law. And uh, uh, then we have the um, 
National Court Register. It's the uh, KRS, KRS in Polish, Krajowy Rejestr Sądowy, which handles all the business registrations. So there is a white, like one register in Poland for uh, for business for registering the the business, and there is also uh, like the uh, central statistical office uh, for. Uh, providing the as is, as, uh, essential statistical statistical data. Uh, the parliament created the, the, the business law and the primary legal document governing the business in Poland is the uh, commercial companies code. Uh, it, it's something that's called co codex work hand law in Poland, in Polish, as you see on the picture. So it, it, it regulates all the details, all the rules for, for formation of the company, management of the company, responsibilities of the, of the shareholders, uh, managers, uh, management boards. Uh, is that the question, is there any database of laws and regulations in English? Uh, I guess you, you, could find, you, could, you could find some, and when we, we'll talk about it, will will uh, will uh, deliver you some links or 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 uh, uh, materials regarding those those things so uh, as we said commercial uh, uh, companies code that's the that's the like the bible of of uh, businesses but it's it's actually more more of, uh, uh, it's not it's not touching the sole proprietor uh, kind of business as much as all the other forms of of, of companies. Mm -hmm. But it lays out the details uh, detailed rules for formation, management, responsibilities, and dissolution of partnerships and companies because it's also important that somehow sometimes closing the company is also complicated. It's not like uh, when you have the individual business, uh, opening and closing is easy. If you have the like limited liability company or other type of company or partnership, there are, there are, there are rules that you have to follow if you want to dissolve the company. Uh, so with an understanding of the Legal landscape. Let's let's proceed to the uh, like the general rules of practical step of of setting up a business in in uh, in Poland. So, uh, key step to setting up the business is registration with the with the KRS National Code Register. Uh, it involves submitting all the necessary documents, such as the company articles of association or statue or proof of bank account for the initial capital. So that's those are the things that are that are important. Then uh, there is a tax registration, meaning that business must register for tax uh, purposes, depending on the type of business. Uh, companies may register for VAT, uh, corporate income tax or per personal income tax. So let's say when you are when you are sole proprietor, individual na działalność, you pay a personal income tax uh, as a as a as a as a as a company. Uh, you can register register as a VAT uh, payer or not. Uh, uh, to some extent, so. If, if your business is not that big, you may register, you don't have to register as a VAT uh, payer. Uh, after exceeding some revenue thresholds, you must register as a VAT uh, payer. Uh, some business also require uh, permits or licenses. Uh, it depends on what kind of business are you doing. So during the registration, uh, you get the information if the business you're trying to do uh, or planning to do requires some uh, permits or, or licenses. Uh, during the registration process, you choose uh, the uh, PKD 
codes, meaning what kind of uh, what kind of business are you gonna do? And uh, if you pick some 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 kind of activities that require uh, some permits or or licenses, you're informed about that. So uh, it, it, there is no uh, danger that you have to get some permits or, or licenses, but uh, you you would you wouldn't know about it because that the system would not let you will let you uh, let you uh, in. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll talk a bit more about uh, three things. Uh, about the labor market in Poland, about the infrastructure, and about the challenges of doing business in Poland. So, starting with the labor market, uh, as you know, uh, Poland has a quite large and skilled labor force. Uh, many Poles have a university degree, especially in fields like IT, engineering, and, and finance. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, with the demography and demographical challenges, uh, there is a lack of 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 uh, of personnel in some uh, in some sectors of of uh, of uh, economy. Uh, some of them may know if you're in IT or or IT related businesses, uh, there is a so there is a shortage of of uh, Programmers or people working with IT, so uh, there is an easy way to 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 find a job. Another different part is uh, the the construction sector of the economy. So uh, I think, uh, beside the fact that that Poland has a large and uh, educated labor force, uh, the Polish economy could still uh, absorb large number of. Uh, of uh, people and uh, especially people with uh, uh, good education. In this aspect, uh, having uh, all the refugees or migrants from Ukraine is, a, in my opinion, a, a good chance for 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 Polish economy to to absorb these these uh, these educated uh, people that that came to Poland. And there is also the uh, the challenge because uh, from the other projects we do, we know that most of the of the um, uh, uh, people from Ukraine that came to Poland are working uh, in doing the jobs uh, below their below their uh, their uh, education level. So there is a challenge to to uh, to have projects. Like like this one or other that could help uh, that would help that would help you enter the or contribute to the economy as a worker or as a entrepreneur uh, uh, like like this. Uh, what's important? There's quite high English proficiency among Polish workers, especially in the young, younger generations and in the major cities. So it's a significant uh, uh, advantage for international businesses that set up uh, their, their, their offices in Poland and uh, use them um, as a, like the international hubs for some services. Uh, on the other hand, uh, despite the high level of skills and education, uh, the wage levels in Poland are still Competitive, uh, competitive is a nice word for for meaning uh, much lower than in the in the West or the Germany or Western Europe. So, it's efficient for 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 businesses, especially foreign businesses. Uh, not so good for workers, but it's it's changing also slowly, but it is. Uh, beyond the the like the human resources aspect, another crucial thing for the doing business in Poland is the infrastructure. So uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, 
the infrastructure is is uh, I would say modern because there is a there is a very big improvement in the last 15 years regarding the the roads, the telecommunication networks, transportation. So big, big, big money from the from the Polish government, but also from the European Union was put into the 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 road system. Let's say you know before before uh, uh, 2010, there were just like the two highways in Poland. Uh, but now the you know the network of 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 of, of the of the uh, high speed roads is uh, it's growing, and it's uh, it makes some kind of businesses uh, much easier, uh, especially the one that involves some some logistics because. Uh, as you know, Poland is located in the heart of Europe, so between east and west, uh, uh, and serves both 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 both, both mar markets, and it it provides the access to this 500 million uh, people in the European Union. Um, while Poland has many advantages, it's also important to consider that. Uh, that there are some challenges for doing business in the country, and and we'll say a few words about them. Some of them might be uh, known for you from your experience in Ukraine. So bureaucracy, it's still uh, it's still uh, 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 present, and and sometimes it it may uh, make some bureaucratic hurdles and and some administrative procedures could be lengthy so uh, it's important to understand the local environment and uh, legal requirements for some some things uh, that would make be easier to uh, to overcome them so bureaucracy it's getting better from my own experience it's getting better uh, it's even when you when you uh, deal with like the financial authorities tax tax inspectors uh, 20 years ago it was scary every contact with the tax inspector was scary because you you would expect that they would find something and and you'll get a fine to pay uh, now it's not 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 always the case. It's very very often I I encounter people that were just helpful and uh, working together to find the best way to get out of some situations or or just just uh, showing the 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 the, the, the ways. So uh, so it's getting better, and uh, uh, you're not you you should not be scary to to deal with with Polish like the office workers actually uh, but still the there is the legal complexity uh, because the it's like in any other country you know the the legislative the legislation body like the polish same uh, it's producing every year they're producing you know uh, Another, another, and another uh, laws, and and sometimes it's really, really difficult even for the experts to uh, to find their way among the different regulations, and uh, very often it it requires some professional advice to to uh, to do it, especially for for like international business it 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 might be might be uh, challenging uh, which is uh, which is why which is um, which makes it in uh, important to know for example that uh, when you uh, have a business in Poland it's good to have like the local accountant services because the local accountant uh, uh, have to know the the 
the law and how it is changing and uh, uh, for not much not big amount of money can save a lot of of problems uh with uh with the you know paying taxes every month and and filling up declaration and so on there are some also there are some there are some there are some uh companies that 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 offer these services online from my experience uh, the face to face contact with the accountant is still the best way because you can you can get the uh the the uh, results suited for your needs and uh the prices are actually uh like the marginal regarding the the, the business so um that's that's something that that uh, you should re remember about this legal complex complexity uh there is still a language barrier so while the english proficiency is high among the younger generation uh it's not it's not the case for 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 every especially like the uh, older people working in some offices so sometimes might might be difficult to to communicate with them and they might not understand uh english uh so sometimes it may be necessary to use some translation services or or have a like the polish speaker polish speaking team member or someone that, that will help you to deal with the uh, with 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 doing some things with with uh, some you know in some in some in some offices uh well another thing is the like the the market competition of course you know the the Polish market is is like the quite big, uh, but there also there is also quite competitive. So of course, depending on the industry, uh, uh, we, we're in this stage of like the economic economical development when uh, it's not easy to find a, a, a profitable niche as it used to be like. 30 years ago or maybe 20 years ago is Ukraine when you you just copy some some business model from the west and bring it to 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 your country as as an as a new thing and do something but on the other hand you might have some ideas from Ukraine that are not you know that because sometimes when you skip some some stages of economical development you just invent something something uh, clever something new something uh unique so uh so it's always good to to look for this kind of of um uh, uh of uh profitable niches and uh comprehensive market analysis and and having like the unique selling proposition uh it's it's really important to be successful in the in the business so uh, somehow stick out stick out of the crowd and and doing something that it's uh that it's different or or that just have something that's that's uh, uh well that that could bring the attention of the customers towards you and uh, to conclude all the all the things that we we we've said about so uh Poland economy is still strong resilient economy with steady growth uh, and hope the same will stay for the future uh it's still attractive investment destination uh but understanding the legal and regulatory landscape is is crucial and uh while there are the challenges the ease of doing business is uh, a quiet uh, high. Uh, so we have different business structures, and according to the um, to the um, type of business you're doing, it's easy to pick up the best suited for you, from sole proprietorship to the like, large joint stock company. Uh, 
challenges, including bureaucratic or legal complexities, uh, can be overcome with some help of local expertise, preparation and understanding of Polish business environment. And uh, uh, we will try to uh, dive deeply into some of the topics I just painted as a as a picture of of this Polish uh, economic economical background, uh, and uh, we will talk about them in the next uh, lectures. Uh, as I said, we will prepare the kind of survey for you, uh, which will help us, uh, which will help us uh, set up the 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 lectures the best that we could. Uh, now we have eight minutes, so if there are any questions uh, regarding what I said, or uh, we are, I'm open to, to to questions. We can also communicate on the WhatsApp in the WhatsApp group. Uh, uh, yep. All, all in Amish and Scott. Left hand. So, yes, Mr. please. What is, your, uh, what is your advice? Did I understand cor correctly that your advice is to use uh, account and uh, services and low services from the beginning and not even try to do it ourselves? Yeah, that's for sure. I'm not doing it my, my, myself, and I've been, uh, uh, I set up my first, like the uh, uh, company. Uh, 30 years ago, and I was uh, CEO in some companies, big companies, and I was management uh, on a management board. And I wouldn't do it myself because it's it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of uh, uh, actually, you know, the 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 law is changing so uh, so often. Yeah, but we are getting used to work in this changing environment. Like Irina but, uh, wrote on the chat that we. I'm not yeah. scared anymore. <laughs> You're not scared. That's good. But uh, on the other hand, well, uh, I pay my accountant for uh, like the you know uh, uh, three hundred zloty a month, three hundred. So it's it's just you know it's it's yeah, nothing. It's affordable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's nothing. And and, and even if, you, if in, even if I had to spend like you know five hours doing the same thing, it's not worth it. So. So and and the uh, and the possibility of making a mistake would be much much bigger. So that the, regarding the 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 accountancy, it's it's having a local accountant is a, a must. I I would say even for the Polish Polish people and and especially for you when you when you have like the you might have difficulties understanding some some things. So you know sure. the, the the accountant offices they just you know, they, they just follow the changes in the law uh, day by day. They know things from each other. They just stay connected. And and uh, and there are some also people speaking Ukrainian that I know that they're doing such things. I know that the, for the other projects, we, we were cooperating with two, two girls from Ukraine that, that are in Poland for, for uh, almost 10 years, and they're just working for the for those kind of businesses, so there is also a way to find some some uh, advice and and even the the services. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Irena? Thank you. Um, thank you very much. My my question would be: uh, Is it possible to cover in the next uh, lectures how to hire other people? If I am like one person, maybe it could be interesting for others as well. How to hire? Yes, uh, yes. What, 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 what mm -hmm. requirements to hire other people mm -hmm. for my business, for example? You mean the, the legal requirements and formal requirements yes. and things yes, like formal. that? Yes, formal yeah. requirements to yeah. hire other people. That's... And for example, if they are Polish people and if they are, for example, are Ukrainians, yeah. which have that's, uh, that's, the... Uh, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Kasia, write that down. We, we, we will cover that because that and... might be interesting for, for everybody. And one more topic, yeah. if I would like, my like maybe naive strategy is like 
dreaming about love in Ukraine, I need some capital. If I need some mm -hmm. capital, I need to invest somewhere. Could you give some, maybe, on one of the lectures, uh, give some advice, maybe, on areas which are attractive in terms of investment in Poland? Like getting, like getting capital, right? Not getting, like, no, yes, making money work for ourselves. Which areas of market could be, like, fast developing in the... Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll try to we'll, we'll try I understand. to understand. We'll, it could be a separate yeah, yeah. training or separate mm -hmm. course, but uh, mm -hmm. karma, which uh, you know, we have like we are we are we have in plan like uh, I guess six uh, six meetings, uh, just talking about setting up the companies and the taxes. It would not make sense to 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 talk about it for 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 uh, six six meetings, uh, one and a half hour each. So uh, we'll be glad to, to cover other topics that are interesting for you, especially if there are just somehow uh, specific for the, for, the, for the Poland. So this kind of, of things that you said, Olena and you, Irina, are something that could be interesting for, for everyone. Yeah. Anyway, as I said, uh, we will prepare this, this survey so you could fill up the 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 ideas for for other lectures and for something that would be interesting for you any other questions no uh, so i hope we'll see each other tomorrow right yes yeah, yeah. See you. <laughs> yeah. so 